Hello, Cowboy Jim. Um, this, this subject matter, um, abuse, it's horrifying. Um, but anyways, I, uh, I was going to go outside and have a smoke. My creator said, no, start the video. This is part two. Okay. I don't know how long this will be. Because I don't know what direction my God is going to take me in. Yeah. I think my eyes are a little shiny. It's because my heart just is broken. Okay. So... Let's suck it up and uh, and get this done. Okay. So I spoke about overeating, eating disorders. Let's just call that. Um, spoke about uh, inflicting pain on others. My friend, my martial arts or uh, yeah, MMA fighter friend. Uh, Spoke about the little girl that lost her dad. Terrible. I have spoken with a lot of women because men won't talk to you. I, I look at truly obese men and I think, I wonder what your childhood was like because you gutless, spineless person, you won't talk about what it was like. And by talking about it, you give people a chance to hope. I had a giant friend, six foot five, 465 pounds. That's a big man. He was a good man. He just had a problem with eating. We sat around a campfire one night, Great Slave Lake in the north, and uh, I said, I think one of the main issues that you have dealt with that has led to your eating habits is rejection from your dad. Well, I'm five foot six and a half. I am rugged and I am tough. But I wish that I had been about six foot six and a half. Because that giant man looked like I had shot him. I said, who rejected you? He said, my dad. Every day of my life, my dad, my dad. And uh, I said, is that why you eat? He said, you mean when I sit down and eat a gallon of ice cream after having supper, two or three plates, you think it's because my dad rejected me? I said, yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. So, I, I want to indicate, I want to show you, there is a release. I painted a picture of an abused lady, I mean, dear Lord God in heaven who sat on her boom at the side of a room, crowded room, her knees drawn up almost in a fetal position, her head resting on her arms, which were resting on her knees. All she wanted was to be accepted. She just wanted to 
be accepted as normal. Well, she was an extraordinary lady. I mean, she is a bodybuilder. She never said a word to me about this subject. I just looked into her heart. And I can look into hearts under the unction of the Holy Spirit. And um, I, I can't even remember the, the, the name of it. Oh, I wish I could. Gee whiz. I may try to do a, a footnote. Hey, I could probably look it up after and put it in the description. I experienced uh, abuse from a man who was half my age, he and his lady wanted to steal everything that I had. So I understand about abuse and, and I studied after the fact, I studied every single thing that they did that was done in an effort to destroy who I am and was in order to take ownership of who I am. That's what abusers do with children. They destroy them psychologically, physically, mentally. And they do it in order to satisfy, gratify their own perverted sexual needs. You say, why would God allow that? Because he had to. Because it was the only way, not just about abuse children, but God had to give mankind a choice to choose to love him and or reject him, to love Satan by rejecting him. He did it. My heart goes out to the children. My heart goes out to the ladies who have grown through that abuse. I don't know what to do with these guys who don't have enough guts to talk. I know my big friend, I, I know him. He had enough guts to tell me about his childhood. And I respect him for it. I, I said in the first video, the people who have grown through abuse, and when I was five years old, I was boarded out with a bunch of hillbillies, and my best friend was a seven or eight year old Down syndrome, we didn't call him Down syndrome back then. Political correctness was not a necessity. They called him a mongoloid child, but his name was Barry, and he taught me the meaning of love, to care for another, and I watched him go through stuff. It was not right. It was not right. And if those people don't get their hearts right with God before they get to meet him, Oh well, Barry got his heart right with God. Okay, this is, this is the important thing. This is the only part of all this that is important. It's called the release. So here. You've been abused sexually, mentally. You've been used and abused. Rancher, say, ridden hard and put up wet. You need a release that will allow you peace, that will allow you to not follow the dinner plate 
or not reject a dinner plate. You need something, someone to take the pain away. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Redeemer, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the soon coming don't pick on God because he was honest enough to give you a chance to choose between good and evil yeah oh children hard on the kids hard on the kids hard but evil will have its way. The guy that abused me claims that his mother sexually used and abused him, and thus he felt it was only natural to try to rob, steal everything that I had. So, how are you going to respond to the agony of life's experience? How are you going to avoid becoming 490 pounds or 90 pounds? How are you going to avoid becoming an abuser yourself? Because that happens. That happens. What, what can you do to protect yourself? What can you do to avoid falling, following in the footsteps of those who have abused you? Well, it starts with that terrible question that two native ladies asked me at the front of Center Street Church. They said, Jim, how do we forgive? I said, you're asking the wrong person, eh? I have a bit of an issue with forgiveness, eh? I'm more apt to exact retribution, but that's not my God's way. He will bring everything into light one day, and he will judge, and his judgment will be perfect. We're not God. Thank God I'm not God, because my God is perfect. I'm Irish. Okay, you take all your memories as a child, all your memories. Oh, 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 you ought to, you ought to watch uh, Robin's Donuts, French Girl, Robin's Donuts. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I don't like abuse. I don't put up with it. Neither should you. Okay, there is uh, our Lord's Prayer, our Father who is art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. One of the lines is, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Conditional forgiveness in many ways it is. You don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. So here, how do you handle the agony? How do you handle all the scars? How do you handle a body that has been so stretched as a child that you about need diapers? Well, you start by saying, God, I choose to forgive. Those two ladies at the front of the Center Street Church, they said, Jim, how do we forgive our brother-in-law? I said, it goes back to the Lord's Prayer, but I said, you have to help me understand a bit. 
She said our little sister came home and found him having sexual intercourse with their two-year-old baby. Boy. I said, well, forgiveness, screw that. I said, if I were there, I would have killed them. That's fact. I said, I would gladly kill that bastard, and I would gladly go and spend the rest of my life in jail. Oh, she said, Jim, you don't understand. Dear God, she said, her brother-in-law killed our baby sister, and then I knew why the one lady, the, the one sister, she, she couldn't stop crying. I, both, I have had a hard time visiting this subject since without crying. So I said, it goes back to the Lord's Prayer. You say the words, I choose to forgive that bastard. Okay, I'm Irish, get over it. I said, you may not have the ability in your heart now to walk in that forgiveness, but you say the words. God will recognize that you have a heart to forgive. You just have a little time you're going to need to take. So, so, so. How do you as an adult, how do you as a child, how do you handle the agony of life? Oh, I know people who have spent their life in martial arts, learning to fight box, becoming so perfect in body that no one would ever lay hands on them again. No one would have enough guts because those ladies in there, there's a group of them, those ladies, they won't take stuff from men and it's not only just men, gee whiz, it's women too, who abuse children, okay? Your only hope for release from the agony that you feel is to say this, God, I forgive those who have used and abused me. Please forgive me. I accept that Jesus the Christ took my place on the cross for my sins. I am sorry, help me to be what you want me to be. There are a world of men who would gladly take any woman to bed but they would never take that same woman home to meet their mother. Listen, you ask God to forgive you. No one has the right to judge you. I told the guy one time, I said, I would gladly marry that woman. He said, she's had a rough life. I said, I could care less. Has she asked God to forgive her? Has she purposed in her heart to fight against that abuse? Well, then how can I judge her? I won't. I wouldn't. Never. Never. So listen, God bless. This is part two. It's called the release. Only way that you can be released from yesterday is to ask God to forgive you. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and say, God, I am sorry, help me to be what you want me to be. But if you continue in life, in anger, you're going to reap the reward of not forgiving people. You must forgive in order to move on. So this is part two. There might be a part three. I don't know. I don't know. God bless you, and, and, I, and I humbly apologize 
for being a rancher and somewhat, shall we say, inept, but I do live by my heart. Okay. That's what I live by. I look up uh, Robin's Donuts. It's called French Girl Robin's Donuts. It's, it's, it's worth the video. It's worth the watch. God bless, eh? Yeah, there'll be a part three. Okay. Okay.